independent music. The triangle of musicians, fans and music professionals. This is Tim from the Indie Bands blog and welcome once again. Who's on today? Let's go find out. Episode number three of Indie Music Tips. Uh, this time I'm with Matt of the Brisbane in Australia rock band Skinwalkers. And we're going to talk about something that's close to my heart. As you know, I'm an old punk rocker. Making a difference. Hi, Matt. How are you going? I'm, I'm very well. Yourself? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks, mate. I, I've got a confession to make that I screwed up our time. We were meant to do this yesterday, but of course uh, I managed to make a complete hash of that. So my apologies. Ah, uh, all good, my friend. Happy to be. Here. So tell me about making a difference. You you guys are in a band, and you do what? Uh well, yep, you are correct about that. We are in a band. There is um, three of us, and we formed a, a group here about. I don't know, back in 2008, and um, we are a socially conscious group of people, I, I suppose the best way of describing it is that we've got a pretty deep care for what happens uh, in the world on a lot of different levels, and you know, with that kind of care comes an obligation to find out more, so we do a lot of research um, and have done a lot of research over the years to figure these things out, and from that I think it means uh, for us that now that we know, you know, it's not something you can shy away from either. So we do whatever we can, wherever we can, um, to try and contribute uh, as musicians. I suppose that's a, a multi-dimensional facet of being in a band. Yeah. Uh, I, as I said, I'm an old punk rocker, so I was, I was more about moaning about the world, whereas listening to, to the music that I have of, of yours, you're actually putting out a positive message there. Yeah, most definitely. I think um, it's been the way of people to, at least at always at times, to recognise the problem. I mean, you know, I was deeply inspired by The Clash and, um, you know, Ghost Drummer's message in his time. And that sort of was pretty impressionable on me as a as a younger person. And growing into that these days, you know, just the recognition of, of what goes on in the world is, is definitely something. But... Um, I don't know. As the, as the years have gone on for me, I've been starting to look for solutions um, to these problems because, you know, complaining on and on about it isn't actually doing anything. So sure, we just want to try and take action on the problems. And you do that in quite an interesting way. You you not only have the, the music, but you also run a, an interview series, uh, your own interview series on, on a YouTube channel. I, I will get the URL for that at the end of the interview um, oh. called Everyone Has a Story. What, what's that about? Uh, well, that was a uh, a project that us boys decided we would um, sort of kickstart back in around September last year uh, for the single release of, of that song, Everyone Has a Story. And basically it was just, we had the thought where with all the research and the things that we're doing and, and trying to find out about this stuff, along the way we've had these, you know, absolutely remarkable conversations with people who have been able to provide us with, um, you know, very inspirational experiences, just hearing their words and their uh, time and stories you know, from what they've been through and what they're doing um, has you know, deeply moved us. And we, we made the decision that if we could share that with other people, then we were going to do anything we could to do that. So we just figured out a way of doing so with you know, using the um, wonders of technology and things like Skype sure. and such to connect with people all across the world and um, you know, have conversations with them about their story, about what's led them to this point. And um, you know, we've been targeting people that have, uh, within their own worlds, are, are likened to what we're doing, trying to you know, make a change positively and see how that has planned out and how they've, uh, they're living with that and you know, what happens. So that's been a huge experience for us, I suppose. It's not uh, the norm, I suppose, for bands, but it's, it's something we're excited to be a part of. I think it probably marks a, a, quite an interesting differential uh, that not only is it your music that's talking about your message, but you're uh, doing something extremely positive by trying to connect with other people and, and get that to, to a, an even broader audience because not everybody's going to love the music, but they will have time for the, uh, for the conversations. So I think that's a great idea. 
Yeah, well, quite possibly. I mean, at the end of the day, um, as I said before, we've got to try and uh, reinvent the concept of being a musician because the old way is, is starting to look a little outdated. Um, the whole rock star concept or, you know, living off a record label concept, all those things yep. aren't as feasible as they once were. So for us, we just try and keep remembering it every step of the way is that we're still people. Um, you know, we're still no different than the people that are standing in front of us on at, at, at shows or, you know, any of those people that buy our CDs. And we don't want to lose that sense of integrity um, and perspective. Sure. And I know there's a number of subjects that you have looked at that are predominantly Australian focused, which is quite natural because that's where you are, such as youth homelessness and mm. uh, disenfranchisement. Uh, from society, but you also look at uh, environmental and, 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 and international governmental issues. Do you have a, connections with other bands around the world, or, or are you in isolation trying to get the message more broadly spread? Um, it's a cross between two worlds. I would say that we have been trying, you know, to make contact with these people. Don't. Um, don't get me wrong, we've definitely put the feelers out to try and contact as many different people doing what they're doing and you know, in a way that we respect and want to make contact with. Uh, not everybody's responded and you know, there are obviously a multitude of reasons as to why that can be. Of course. People are busy of and things are natural, but we've also had, you know, at least the same amount come back to us. Um, and it's a developing thing. It's there's not a, a huge amount of people or well there actually is a lot of people there aren't a lot of bands that I know of right now that are doing this, um, or at least if they are, they're not from our uh, respective genre or category. Or I, I don't know. We don't really have a genre as a band because the band's music keeps changing. So I won't use genre. I'll just use yeah. the alternative category in general. Um, yeah, it's hard to find bands that are, are pushing out in that way or are willing to go to those lengths um, beyond maybe just saying it in their song if they care about it. But it's not the band goal is not about doing that. It's not about trying to find change. It's still about being a band and touring and blah, blah, blah. Whereas I suppose for us, um, there's a huge uh, underlying you know, drive for all of this. Um, we're yearning to see a bit of change for the planet in a whole heap of different ways, you know, environmentally, yeah. um, societally, politically. Uh, it, it's all tied in, I guess, um, to what we're about and, and what we do. Uh, perhaps a bit of a difficult question to uh, to ask you to sum up, but looking on a, on a, a sort of a broad perspective of uh, of the world of, of independent musicians, uh, which is what this series is is very much focused on. What advice or tips or thoughts? Do, do, do you have that you think that, that taking this sort of stance and this sort of direction uh, and not necessarily uh, all bands, as you say, are going to want to be involved in, 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 in exactly the same political issues. But what difference has it made to you as a band in being able to do that, that someone else could say, actually, there's some real value here? Yeah, well, I suppose people put their value in music in different places. Um, you know, a lot of people listen to music for different reasons, and, and particularly that I don't believe that there's a, a great percentage of the planet right now that's listening to music for their uh, information or for their um, their sense of inner justice about what's going on. They're, yeah. they're looking to enjoy themselves. So there's definitely a cross aspect for us where we're trying to uh, not enlighten people, but just spread. Uh, the, the information that we've taken and get that to them in, in our experience and through our music and what we try to say. Um, but at the same time, obviously, we're, we're still a band. We're still entertainers, and we don't forget that. So, um, you know, we, we're definitely still very much about being a band. And we are an independent band, as you say. So we do a lot of all of this stuff ourselves. We don't have a, a record label or a massive um, group or anything like that behind us. We're still very much grassroots and um, taking things from the ground up. And I guess my best advice when it comes to trying to deal with this information um, is, one, you've got to be passionate about it first, um, you know, because there's enough people out there that want to use different issues and things like that as, as a pulley for attention um, because, because it's in mainstream news or because it's uh, a trending thing. 
but yeah. I don't see much point in that. It's not going to, you're better off just doing what you love, no matter what that is in music. But for those who really have a, a deep passion about trying to say something and try and make a change, then, um, you know, be informed. Um, you know, you've got that obligation to yourself to actually be up to date with what's going on and understand the greater picture. Um, and, most definitely don't be afraid to try. Uh, you've got to act on these things. Anything our band has done uh, for ourselves has only been by trying. We've just You just put it out there. If you can find an email address of something that chases up what you want, then don't be afraid to send that email because you never know what might come back. That sort of leads me on to, to, to one thing that every band talks to me about uh, other than money is time. How on earth do you manage to do all this? I, I manage it terribly. I'm, I'm going to be perfectly <laughs> honest with you. I am, um, I am 50% a wreck half the time, and that's probably not positive outlook for anyone else. But um, no, honestly, there is a time is a huge thing, and being an independent band, you've got to put in a lot of hours. You've got to put in a lot of yards. But it's all about your team. It's all about the people you surround yourself with. Um, and, you know, that, that comes down to luck in some ways as well. It depends on who is around you and how those circumstances play out. We've had the the blessing of having some people uh, within our group that are very passionate about, you know, what we're doing because it, it meets with their, you know, their inner goals as well about what's going on with the world and they want to see change. Um, if people can see what we're doing as a vehicle to that, then, you know, they're more than willing to help out. So, yeah. We've had I mean, that, you know, a small team that's, that helps. So you've had? We've had a small team that helps us, but it, yeah. it it manages to stay very independent, and so we just delegate the time to what's most important first and try and catch up with everything else as we go. Yeah. It's interesting. That this is only the third uh, of the series that I've done, and they've been on, <laughs> on a wide perspective of, of subjects. But one of the, the main issues that's come out from everybody I've spoken to so far is connection. You have to speak to other people. Yes, most definitely. Well, I'm sort of that guy um, in in our band. I'm sort of the guy that um, does a lot of the conversing with people, which is probably mm. why you're talking to me right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> but... You know, that's that's most definitely one of the most important aspects about being a band. I mean, I, I had an interview with someone recently and they they mentioned to me um, off air just a story about the, the secret life of, of the cow. And it's this interesting story about the hierarchy of the cows and how if they took the leader out, what was going to happen, they researched how they were going to pick, how the cows were going to decide their new leader, basically, of the herd. And um, the conclusion that they came to on the research after watching them and how it happened is the one who became the pack leader was the one who was the most sociable, the one who, for lack of a better term, sucked ass, got around and, and talked to a lot of people and, and was sociable and made those connections with people. That They're the people that, that end up taking the leading role. So yeah. um, it, it's definitely about being out there. You've got to be available and, you know, sort of everywhere if you can be. Um, well, uh, as I said, I screwed you you up yesterday. You've made yourself available just 24 hours later, so you definitely do that. Um, <laughs> what right. about the, the, the aspect of, of you could do this in a very different direction. You, you could f put this down to, to simple words. You, you could start a, a, a fanzine. You could become a, a, a newspaper editor, whatever it might be. Uh, but you choose to do it with music. Why do you choose music as your medium of difference? Well, for the record, we may start a fanzine or, um, you know, do this into text or something like that, but we'll still be a band. <laughs> See, that, that I think that's the beautiful thing about this is there are no limitations. There's no definable thing in, in a creative job that says you are this. So as musicians, we play music, sure, but mm -hmm. that doesn't have to be the only thing we do. Uh, we love playing music. That was my first and foremost reason for getting into being in a band in the first place was because I love music. But, you know, coming out of high school and being forced to vote and, um, you know, being thrown into the system, as it were, it, it forces you to go, 
you know, wake up time because you've got to try and get your head on and you didn't really learn anything out of school from, you know, what goes on in life, what are your rights? <laughs> yeah. Where do you stand, you know, amongst all of this, you know, craziness? And that's where I started, I suppose. I got out of school and I started to educate myself. And <laughs> that's that's that was my up to now point. Okay. So music is 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 a vehicle that that emotionally fits in with with you as much as the the change that you're trying to to yeah, drive through. Totally. The music is what comes first for us. I mean, I I was already playing in bands before we sort of started to come onto this information. You know, I've been in punk bands as a teenager and already been used to complaining about what goes on. But um you know, it's not not once until you learn about it that you start to understand it. But we weren't ever going to give up on being musicians. We just realised that no matter what your intention is or whatever it is you're trying to do as a person personally, um, you know, the three of us have have a, an equal say in what we do and and how we do it, and we all believe in in what we're doing here. Um, and I suppose there's no reason why we can't being musicians. Um, bring this side of, of, of ourselves to the fore as well. I really hope that project uh, kicks off and, and uh, continues to grow because it is something positive. It is that you're, you're looking at the issues that are out there and, and rather than, as, you, uh, as I did, uh, and still do to be honest, uh, moaning about them, you're actually trying to identify ways to make a change so let's say that, that there's a band out in uh, I don't know let's go to Brazil uh, for a change that mm -hmm. says actually we're, we're these are the kinds of things that we talk about that we want to be involved in can can they get involved in your everyone has a story video series or, or can they make contact with you yes most definitely look um, these these videos although we've been sort of you know, definitely thinking and listing the people we'd like to talk to. Um, you know, that makes sense. But uh, we've also put this out there a couple of times is that this is a, an open series. I mean, we'd be happy to talk to anyone off the street if they've got something to say. You know, if, if people are willing to come forward to us with enough passion about a subject that they want to talk about them, we're here to provide that for other people to hear. That's part and, of And how, how would they make contact with you? What, what's uh, the best way to, to get okay. in touch with you guys? Best place to uh, reach the band, um, I suppose, first and foremost, would be the band's Facebook. Um, we don't have a website yet. We're in development. But um, you can catch us on there, which is facebook.com slash skinwalkersmusic. Um, otherwise, you can always email the band personally, and you'll probably end up catching me, um, which would be skinwalkersband um, at hotmail.com so okay I'll, I'll drop both those links below and I, and I hope someone does pick this up and, and is interested in it and I really appreciate your time talking about the issues but what about skinwalkers we, we, we've sort of talked around w what makes you, you tick as a, a, as a band but tell people about skinwalkers a little bit sure well um, I mean we're just we're very much like a lot of other bands we've you know cut our teeth on the local scene and, you know, sort of grew up playing around the local scene and just got our feet doing that. Um, but, you know, we probably at around, hmm, after recording our first EP, uh, there was a point amidst that when we were in between vocals, I think. Um, and we, we did a, a trip to Sydney um, to work with the youth homelessness kids down there and, that was a huge moving experience for us and probably a, a wake-up period as to um, once we did that as a band, you know, went down and, and worked with these kids, we sort of realised that there's a lot more that you can do as a band, um, you know, to get out there. So on top of regularly playing and recording and, um, you know, we've done a few tours and we were lucky enough to play um, one of Australia's larger festivals this year at Big Day Out. So... Uh, you know, things are looking good. We're trying to work with uh, community radio and, and community projects and keep things independent and ground level uh, because, you know, as I said, trying to keep things in perspective is important. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're just a, a regular group of three guys that, you know, I guess really give a damn about what we care about. And um, we want to try and, you know, propel that as much as we can through what we love and, and our passion, which is music foremost. So... 
that's sort of our our little spiel. Basically, this year we hope to tour again, and um, you know, in our own country. And eventually, as time goes on, we want to definitely get abroad. It would be amazing to reach the UK one day. Well, hopefully, we'll get to see you over here. Uh, I look forward to that if that does happen. I do understand that you've got uh, one of your from that project, from that Youth Homeless project, uh, We Are the Streets, that's coming out on a, uh, a, a a compilation release in the UK shortly. Yes, that's true. Um, the the track was selected through well, one of the interviews we actually did with a guy called Eagle Spitz, uh, and he works through Punk for the Homeless over there in the UK, and he's been in contact with us since we started that project with We Are the Streets all the way back in 2010. So um, basically, that song got selected to be on a compilation for Punk for the Homeless, and that's sort of getting around the UK. It's going to be in support of Casa Alianza, which is a another group um, that are helping disenfranchised children across the world, um, specifically, I think, in South Africa and um, other parts of the world as well. So, yeah, we're really happy to be on board with that. Um, and I don't actually know when it's coming out. I'm sort of on the pending side of that. So if sure. I get anything, I'll be sure to let you know. But it is yeah, coming. Yeah, great. I'll update on that, of course. Hmm. No, that'd be great. And uh, I do appreciate the time that, that, that you give me, so so thanks for that. Uh, it'd be good to finish off with your latest single called Have We Won? Yes. I'll speak to you again soon, hopefully, Matt. No worries. Thank you very much, Tim. Bye. Bye. <laughs>